Hello, friends. Uh, my name is Maggie Lewis, and I am one of two partners at Studio Blue, and we are award-winning an award-winning graphic design firm focused on serving academic and cultural institutions. And we make logos, books, websites, magazines, si signage, and sometimes walls. Um, we are in one of those creative professions whose process and alleged out-of-the-box thinking are topics of research, conversation as to how the design process might be a model for all of us um, that we should adopt. And here are the reasons I think why that's important. One, we don't wear suits to client meetings. And it's not because we don't want to, it's rather because we would not be trusted as creative if we did. We work in fun office environments, often lost spaces. Um, actually, it's because the rent is cheaper, and there's a lot of windows and fun open space, which is good for collaboration and looking at our work. And I think also it's because we appear to have more fun than many people do in our, in our profession. And I think that is mostly true, because while we're working for our clients, we're pushing ourselves as individuals, and we get to be adventurous in our own work, which is very gratifying. And when I think, this is some of our work, if you haven't figured that out yet. Um, I think that the black clothes, lofts, and fun are outcomes of the design process, not the drivers of creativity and innovation. In my experience, the most important thing a company who wants to produce innovative work can do is to be comfortable not knowing the answers or what the end result will be. Organiz organizations need to find ways to incent and reward risk-taking. And as professionals, whose work often starts with a blank sheet of paper, computer screen, monitor, wall, we know that risk is uncomfortable and sometimes results in an unhappy client. When I have a drink in me, I'll tell you about last week. <laughs> However, it is the only way to come up with a new idea by allowing freedom to try something novel and share incomplete thoughts. Well, I cannot speak to an individual's predisposition to risk. Maybe you can. Um, I can tell you what designers do to foster risk and to bring, bring clients into our creative environment so that they are comfortable with blank sheets of paper and living in the gray. To frame this in an MSOC context, we would go meta. Um, we would start by asking questions and in interviews and in active sessions with our clients. We ask questions such as, what is it you like most about your organization? Why does that matter? What would the world be like if your organization didn't exist? This gives us insight into what the client is really thinking and asking us to do. Well, the statement of work or contract may be a logo, a book, or a website, we know that the client is really looking for increased membership, increased audience engagement, productivity increase, increased giving, and those sorts of things. While the statement, while that may be true, this is a slide of uh, a project we did for Windows on the World at the Art Institute. We do a lot of publications work, high in museum catalogs. And when we're working with the Art Institute, what we're really doing is turning scholarly information into something that's immediate and accessible and not dumbing down the content. We never, ever want to change what the content is. And so here, we're taking what an academic does and providing an academic product, but making it accessible to people that are not art historians and scholars. The second thing we do is turn in to the, tune into the role of affect in our decision-making process. We deal with type, image, and color, and these are tools that we think almost everyone thinks they know a lot about. Well, we know those are three things that you all have an opinion about. Um, so to mitigate subjectivity, we use tools from scenario planning and strategic planning to focus attention on tangible products and goals and how to deliver them. This is a part of a project brief for Roosevelt University. And what we were doing with them is rethinking how a university identity should work. No, it doesn't need to be serif typeface and one big letter. Oh. So we started talking about, this is one framework about what is rooted in their mission and their vision of social activism and what we're to do with that. So the 
is, a, this is an early sketch of some of the work. And we take the conversation from that, from, gosh, our old logo has a flame. We want to see a flame. OK. Um, so that was the flame. This turns the client away from, I took it home and showed it to my spouse, and she didn't really like it. And it comes into, holistically, I can see how this approach will drive attendance and change our image in the marketplace. And this is the eventual mark that they came, we wound up with. We have to always be mindful that we're impacting the client's system. An example would be the work we did with Syracuse University. We had a new dean. She came in and was trying to change her system. Our original contract was to do a website. We turned it into mission, vision, values, planning, and identity. We talked about original technology and all the arms of her school which involved in our um, information gathering sessions, faculty, staff, and students. So they were immediately involved into the process. These are brand guidelines. And what we did was, yeah, we ended up with a website, but we changed the way that the school thinks and talks about themselves. Finally, I'd like to say beauty is a part of all of our lives. And every day we work to make things more beautiful, not pretty. And I think that's the designer's role, make things work better, Function for the user, the end communication, not make it look good. And it's um, seven years, when Terry and I were talking, since Daniel Pink announced that the MFA is the new MBA, I'd like to say that the MSLOC is the new MFA. And, uh, <laughs> and remind you all that you're creative and innovative and doing great work, as we've seen already. Thanks.